Hey folks, welcome to another gauntlet review. Today's review is going to be the LT Wright Mantis. It's a big old chunk of steel with a nice blade on it, nice candy grind. Let me get set up and we'll see what this thing can do. Alright, what we have here is the Mantis, um, designed primarily I believe by William Myers from Mantis Outdoors. I think that's his channel. I'll put a link to his channel. Um, in the description or whatever. But it's an LT Wright knife, 01 tool steel. While I was inside, I wrote down the specs. So I'm just gonna read them off to you real quick. The, uh, the steel is 3 16 inch 01 tool steel. The blade is about five and an eighth, I'm sorry, five and seven eighths inches long. Overall, it's 10 and a half inches long. Approximately the thickest spot from the spine to the blade is about inch and five eighths. And then without the sheath, it weighs approximately 13.2 ounces. Uh, this is, like I said, the Mantis, and I guess there's another name for it. I'm not 100% clear on that. Uh, I guess it's a Latin name. It's called Sospis, whatever. I don't speak Latin. The Mantis is good enough for me. I'll call it that. So anyway, now we got that out of the way. It's a pretty nice knife here. It's definitely on the larger side, so it would be what I would consider a survival type knife as opposed to a bushcrafting knife. Its handle is nice and large. It's uh, just really fits my hand real well. Um, I guess I would prefer to have a little bit of a scallop right here, kind of like my Genesis, but basically I think the Genesis is <laughs> the best knife in the world. But anyway, this is a real nice, heavy duty, chopping, big survival type knife. Definitely got a lot of blade thickness to it. Let's see what we can do with this thing here. All right, well, there's only so many things you can do with a knife. <laughs> After a while, the, the redundancies kind of get up there. But with this brand, of knife, an LT right knife. I already know that I can beat this through an oak piece of firewood with a knot or two or three knots in it. I already know that. It's not going to ruin the edge. It's going to be able to handle that type of, of abuse, which shows me that anything I do out in the woods with it basically is not going to harm this knife. It's just a big full tang chunk of steel. Um, it looks like it's, it, it is kind of designed or shaped very similar to a large Genesis, which I like this blade profile. It's got a little bit of a belly to it, just a tiny bit. So if you did need to process some game or skin some game with it, you could. Nice scandy grind so you get rid of some of the thick material from the back so you can get a good edge to it. It's got some heft to it, some front heavy heft to it, so I could do some chopping with it. So like I said, there being only so many different tasks that you can really put a knife through without being real redundant with some of my other reviews um, I can tell just by looking at this that this is going to be this is going to do everything that I want it to do it's going to be able to make a shelter for me I'm going to be able to do some some fine carving tasks up by the uh, the handle here and then but then also be able to process some game I'm going to be able to stick the point in uh, whatever it is I'm doing, if I'm shaping a piece of wood, I can make a spoon with it, I can make a bow drill fire with it. You can do a lot of things with it, just with this blade profile. I can tell that, like I said, just from using LT's knives bef before, and then uh, this blade profile. I can, I can just tell by picking it up what I'm going to be able to do with it. But, um, having said all that, I definitely need to give it a test, so let's, uh, let's find a live aspen here and see how well it really does chop into into a live piece of wood. It's a pretty nice knife. Just gonna make some initial chops with it. See how it reacts. going pretty slow, pretty easy, checking to see the feel of the knife. I don't want to grab this knife and just start wailing on it, you know, just to, in case maybe the handle isn't perfect for me or something. I don't want it flying out of my hands. 
this will chop, I can tell. But I can also tell that it would be much better off if I used a baton. This isn't, uh, this isn't like a machete or something to where you can just primarily rely on the blade heft. This is, would be much better off doing this with a baton, but it's still working. Definitely still working. Maybe three minutes to cut that down. Like I said, uh, it's a good heavy knife, but it's definitely, I mean, it's not designed to do what I just did with it, but it, it definitely handled the problem, or the uh, project, no problem. Okay, well, I forgot to show you the sheath. I didn't really forget, it's just that I'm wearing it. This is a Kydex sheath. It's got the uh, locking mechanism that you see on a lot of the LT's sheaths. Uh, and it's, the ferro rod loop is big enough for a half inch ferro rod. Obviously, if I was carrying a half-inch ferro rod all the time, I would have put a lanyard in it. But it's secure enough for me just to walk out into the woods right now. <clears throat> so, what I've got here is, I'll, I'll tell you, sometimes, I don't know if it's overconfidence or what it is, or just impatience, but I've made, a fi I've made fires in a lot of different areas. And sometimes, when you've, you, you get a little, maybe, overconfident or impatient, like I was saying, and you don't prepare your fire exactly 100%, the way you should every time. Now that doesn't mean that you don't get a fire, it just means sometimes it may not go up super awesome like what you think it's going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time. I've got a nice base for my fire. <clears throat> Any type of wet environment or snow or anything like that, you should definitely have a barrier between the wet ground and your fire. I don't need this big of a base. This is basically the minimum that I would use. But anyway, I don't need this big of a base because I'm not going to sit here and have a big old fire. But <clears throat> I'm going to try and do, I don't want to say the perfect fire lay because that will get me in trouble. But I want to try and do a really good fire lay. And in, in doing so, I want to take my knife, which I already know is a great chopper. Okay, If I need to do whatever it is I need to do with it. It's, it's a big knife, so I know it's going to handle the big tasks just fine. But what about the smaller tasks? I wish I had a fish or something that I could fillet, but I definitely can tell that I would be able to use this to process small game. But let's just see how it does on feathers. Let's see how I do on feathers with it. Aspen isn't the greatest wood to feather with, in my opinion, but that's all I have. Aspen's funny, it's got uh, some real dry, brittle type wood on the outside a lot of times, and then when you get towards the heartwood, it seems to feather a little better. And I've said this in other videos, feather sticking taxes my hand more than just about any other task when it comes to knife, because uh, when it comes to knife work, it just does. I'm not sure if it's because I have a death grip on the knife or what the deal is or if that's just the way it is for everybody but that's the way it works for me so we've got a less than ideal feather stick but still a feather stick, it's got some curls on it let's continue on you can almost see the different coloration, well you can see the different coloration in the wood here this outside stuff is not going to feather very well for me or this inner lighter colored stuff will, it will do better feel the difference in it, it's softer. See what it would be like to try and make a trap trigger or something with this. You know, maybe I need to beaver chew into this thing to split it exactly where I want it, to break it exactly where I want it. How hard is this to do? If 
piece of cake. I used to think that the only reason that a guy might want a baton would be, especially in my area, would be to make a bow drill fire. But if it is super wet out and you need to get to the inner parts of your wood rapidly, in other words, rather than just sitting there carving on it to get to the bottom, in other words, when it rains a lot here, this outer layer of my wood will be wet. So rather than just sitting here going, you know, trying to shave every last little bit off of it, if I can shave it off in greater chunks, this is a pretty rock piece, let's see if I can shave that off like this, it's more, it conserves more energy, it's an easier process to do just shaving it off. In my opinion, I find it easier anyway. I'm just going to use the stuff that I grabbed today. So what I want to do is try and see where the big stems are and use those around the inner better leaf, leaves, so to speak, of the, of the grass. So I got some stalks, kind of right here, we'll fluff those up a little bit, then we'll take, this is some leaves, a little bit of stalks on the back, fluff it up a little bit, break it apart, and I've got my big old piece of cattail, which I don't need hardly any of it try to work that in there. I don't normally make a fire lay like this. Normally I'll get my stuff on fire, my tinder on fire, and then load up with the smaller stuff. But today we're gonna do it a little bit different. I like to leave my, I like to have my kindling rather large, my pencil, lead, and smaller type stuff rather long. Some folks preference is a log fire, or I'm sorry, log cabin type of fire. And that is really good for cooking. But in my experience, for first getting the fire started, you want more of a, of a teepee type style. So all, if I get this fire started, which I'm trying to in here, right in here, it's going to start curling up a little bit inside, but also on the outside here. And this part of my fire is going to heat up and then add to the next part of the fire. It's just a lot, it, it's got, it gives it a lot more oxygen. It, gives it, it just gives the fire a lot more room to grow. And makes it grow easier and faster. And going into the theme where I said that sometimes I get a little, sometimes I think people, and, and me included, get a little impatient to get your fire going. You know, it's a little chilly out here. I wanna, maybe I'm not practicing today. Maybe I just wanna get a fire and get going on it. Well, you have to collect your wood anyway. So you might as well just settle down and take your time and collect the right amount of wood the first time. Make sure your fire's going good, and then you can worry about, you know, collecting more wood or doing whatever it is, getting on with your day. But if you, you're gonna have problems if you don't take your time.
The good thing about this style of fire is that now I can walk away and this thing's gonna sit here and burn. I can I can go collect more firewood now. I can I can basically walk away from my fire and I know it's gonna still be burning here for at least five or five minutes or so. Smaller task type knife if you want something you know that everybody throws around the term one tool option this would be a good knife for that the only thing and I I can't it's definitely not a problem for me but if you I have I think I have like short pudgy fingers maybe and but I do like large handles on my knives the only thing I could see would be that if you had big like catcher mitt size hands like I got a a friend of mine that I met uh, that uh, got humongous hands, the spacing between the back of the knife and the front of the blade might be a little bit small if you've got humongous hands. You know, for me, it's basically perfect. It's, I can put my index finger right up to the rise of this where the blade starts, and the back part of this handle, which actually locks your hand in, it bumps up against my pinky there. This is a perfect size handle for me. This is this would work just great. So the blade, like I said, is very Genesis-like. It's it's quite it's quite thick, quite heavy. You're not gonna you're so long as you don't use it to like pry off your engine block in your car, you're not gonna have a problem with this knife failing on you. It's a good good style, shape, everything. It's blade heavy. You can do some chopping, you know, minor chopping, like I said, for me, I would rather use a baton with it, but, I mean, it's not, it's not made to be like a Gurkha or a, or a, you know, machete or something. You can do some of those tasks with it, but it's just a good all-around survival knife. I like it. I'm just really bummed I have to send these knives back when I'm done with them. <laughs> I am a knife collector, and I like them. It's a good knife. Alright guys, hope you like this gauntlet review. Take care.